Hi there, I'm Kyle. Welcome back to the WordStream YouTube channel. Digital marketers know that every online advertising platform has its own strengths and weaknesses, all with dozens of ad formats, campaign types, and performance metrics for advertisers to consider. But underneath it all, of course, is the same burning question. How much is this going to cost me? Today, we're going to break down exactly how much it costs to advertise online. We'll run through cost details, including payment structures, how to control cost, and industry averages for Google Ads, Facebook, and Instagram. Ready? Let's get started. Let's start with the online advertising mammoth, Google. Google Ads isn't just the world's largest online ad platform, it's an integral part of the internet itself. You may have heard the joke that Google is an advertising business that happens to own a search engine, but it, this isn't actually far from the truth. In 2019, Google's revenue topped $150 billion. That's a massive number. And Google can attribute the majority of this revenue from online advertising. This then has enabled the company to stay on the cutting edge of search technology. Before we can get into the details of how Google's pricing model works, we need to specify which part of Google's empire we're talking about. Today, we're going to focus on the Google Search Network and the Google Display Network. The Google Search Network is where pay-per-click, or PPC ads, appear, above and below the organic search results for a user's search query. The appearance of these ads on the Search Engine Results page, or SERP, recently changed on desktop. Now, ads will look the same on mobile and desktop SERPs. Here's an example. Because Google serves online ads that are highly relevant to the search query, businesses that use Google advertising are able to drive highly qualified traffic to their site and landing pages. Instead of showing your ads to a huge audience that may or may not be in the market for your products, like you do when you buy billboard space, for instance, you can target your ads to people who are specifically searching for the kinds of products or services you offer. As its name implies, PPC ads are priced on a cost-per-click basis, generally abbreviated to CPC. This means that the advertiser is changed every time somebody clicks on an ad. Your individual cost per click is calculated every single time your ad appears to a process known as an ad auction. The ad auction is Google's way of deciding which ads to display when someone performs a keyword search, what order to rank the ads in, and how much each online advertiser pays per click. There's a lot to say about the ad auction, but at a high level, the formula Google uses to determine your ad rank or the position your ad is on the search engine results page is your CPC bid multiplied by your quality score, which is always between one to 10. Bids you set on your own and quality score is determined by Google taking into account your click-through rate and ad relevance of your content and landing pages. The higher your quality score, the better chance you have to rank higher on the search engine results page, even with a lower bid. Again, this is an abbreviated version, but we will link a post that will help you understand the complexities of the Google ad auction in the description box below. So what's an average cost per click? We thought you'd never ask. Using your own proprietary data, we found that the average CPC across all verticals in search is $2.32, but we've also broken it out more specifically by industry in our benchmarks posts listed in the description box below. The overall range of cost per click goes from a low of $1.16 in the e-commerce industry to a whopping $6.75 for the legal industry. While this range is wide for just a single click, the potential upside of a sale or conversion for each industry is vastly different, as lawyers can charge hundreds to thousands of dollars an hour for their services. All right, let's talk about the other side of Google's ad networks, the Google Display Network or the GDN offers unparalleled reach for advertisers at the expense of lower click-through rates. While ads on the Google search network appear on Google SERPs, display ads appear on any website partnered with Google and included in the Google Display Network. The GDN spans the vast majority of the indexable web, which is why the reach here is unparalleled. Advertisers can include rich media content in many display ad formats, like animation and video, or static images in their ad formats. Not surprisingly, the average cost per click on the Google Display Network is lower than the high intent searches. Coming in at 63 cents, the overall range here stays pretty consistently around a dollar, from a low of 44 cents in the travel and hospitality industry to a dollar 49 cents in the dating category. 
Also, it's worth noting that the cost per click for the dating category is the only one averaging over $1. Display ads on the Google Display Network and really other networks in general often have significantly lower click-through rates than search ads. However, the click-through rates of your online display ads will increase significantly when paired with smart targeting options such as remarketing and life event targeting. As with search ads, display ads drive more return on investment when you can achieve a higher click-through rate. When advertising on Google's display network, you have three pricing options. Cost per click pricing. This means you pay only when someone clicks on your ad. This option is best suited for online campaigns where the goal is to drive traffic back to your website. Cost per thousand impressions pricing. In this option, you pay for ad views, bidding for 1,000 views. This is best suited for brand awareness campaigns where the goal is for an ad to be seen as often as possible by your target audience. Finally, cost per acquisition pricing. Here, you'd set a target cost per acquisition within your campaign and pay when your ad leads to a conversion. You'd want to use this option if your end goal is sales or online transactions. Now that you have all of this information, how can you control your ad costs with Google? We have quite a few tips for you here. The first, you can lower your cost per click across your campaigns by raising your quality scores. Quality score is largely a result of achieving a higher than expected click-through rate. So increase your click-through rates by writing highly relevant ads that hit searchers on an emotional level so they can't help but click then bringing them to a highly relevant landing page. There are a few other techniques you can use to reduce your online ad costs. The first is a technique known as day parting or ad scheduling. This technique allows you to specify windows of time throughout the day when your ads can be shown. For example, a brick and mortar retail business may want to maximize foot traffic to its physical locations and using day parting enables advertisers to restrict ads to hours or days when the store is open. Aside from offering greater control over when ads are displayed, day parting can be used to reduce costs, even during suboptimal windows. Take a look at this graph. You'll see that the average cost per action can fluctuate widely depending on the time of day. This offers advertisers an opportunity to reduce costs if ad budgets are being stretched thin. Another way to control your Google Ads budget is through geo-targeting, which allows advertisers to target the locations that are likely to have the greatest impact. Combined with day parting, this affords advertisers much greater control over where and when their ads can be displayed. Yet another method you can use to keep your advertising budget under control in Google Ads is with device targeting. Allowing advertisers to target specific devices with their ads and bid higher for searches performed on mobile devices. This means that advertisers can bid on higher cost keywords, such as highly lucrative near me searches, as these keywords often have much stronger commercial intent and signify much greater likelihood of that searcher following through on their search by visiting a nearby store. So you know how much it will cost. What's the return? Although certain keywords cost more than others, Google Ads offers an excellent return on investment for advertisers of all sizes. The average cost you can expect to pay will vary depending on your budget and industry. But contrary to popular misconception, paid search marketing isn't just for huge brands with deep pockets. Small businesses can effectively grow their business with a reasonable budget in Google Ads. While advertising on Google Ads tends to be costier than advertising on Bing or Facebook, search intent is truly hard to beat. And these ads are extremely effective at capturing sales right when people are ready to buy which makes them worth a little extra cost. But the best results come from cross-platform strategies. So, on that note, let's talk Facebook. As the world's largest and most widely used social network, Facebook is a true force in the online advertising world. It's quite common for a single business to operate multiple online advertising campaigns across both PPC and paid social. And Facebook ads are an excellent way to diversify your digital strategy and drive sales. Similar to Google, Facebook advertisers can set a daily budget for their campaign. And when that daily budget is depleted, ads are paused until the next day. This happens regardless of what objectives advertisers choose when creating their online advertising campaigns. Advertisers will also set bids to control how their overall ad budget is allocated. In addition to specifying the maximum daily budget, 
Advertisers can also set maximum bids for their campaigns. Just like the bids in the Google Ad Auction, bids on Facebook allow advertisers to control how much they spend on certain actions, such as a user downloading a piece of content or signing up for a newsletter, in conjunction with their daily budgets. This gives advertisers a great deal of control over how and when their ad budget is used. Although Facebook ads offer a lot of flexibility in terms of campaign objectives for advertisers, the costs can still be broken down into real cost per clicks. Take a look at this data. Facebook cost per clicks are low across the board, even in the most expensive industries like business and finance. With an average cost per click of just $1.68, Facebook ads have the potential to deliver an excellent return on investment for advertisers, particularly smaller companies with limited budgets. Advertisers in leisure, hospitality, and pet verticals are particularly well positioned to take advantage of Facebook's low cost per clicks. It's also worth mentioning that the average cost per action on Facebook is significantly lower than on Google Ads. The average on Facebook Ads is $20, whereas it's about $49 on Google Search and $75 for the Google Display Network. The discrepancies here can definitely tell you where to be spending based on what is important to your campaigns. As we did with Google, let's talk about controlling your budget. The easiest and most straightforward way to control your budget in Facebook ads is to set your maximum daily or lifetime budgets to an amount you're comfortable with. As it implies, setting a maximum daily budget means that once your daily maximum has been met, regardless of your campaign type or objectives, your ads will be paused until the next day. Lifetime budgets function similarly to daily budgets, but instead of being limited to a given day, the lifetime budget refers to the life cycle of entire campaigns. Let's say you set a daily budget of $50 in your campaign settings. You can either specify that the campaign should run for six days, or you could set a lifetime budget of $300. The result will be the same. Note that you don't have to set both a lifetime and a daily budget. You choose to set one or the other, depending on your needs. If you're working with a lower daily budget, you can also set maximum bids you're comfortable with to ensure that more modest campaign budgets don't expire immediately due to higher cost per clicks or cost per actions. For example, you could set a maximum daily budget of $50 and a maximum bid of $5. We'll link additional resources for budgeting on Facebook below. Another way to control your online ad costs on Facebook is by taking advantage of the platform's massive array of targeting options by only showing your ads to demographics that are likely to be interested in your offers, you'll get a much stronger return on investment on your Facebook ads. Again, we circle back the return on investment of Facebook advertising. Overall, Facebook ads perform extremely well and offer outstanding return on investment, particularly for small businesses or brands with a niche focus due to its sophisticated targeting options. There aren't many online advertising platforms that offer a decent return on ad budget of $50, but even this modest sum can go a long way on Facebook ads. Remember, people browsing or wasting time on Facebook don't show as much intent to purchase as people searching for exactly what they want on Google ads. But running Facebook ads is an excellent way to reach new audiences, influencing them toward your brand when they're ready to buy. Okay, now we've reached Instagram. When Facebook acquired Instagram for $1 billion in cash and stock in 2012, it wasn't just one of the largest tech acquisitions in recent memory at that time, it was a strategic acquisition that would allow Facebook to expand its already vast global empire. As part of Facebook, Instagram's advertising pricing models function very similarly to those of Facebook ads itself, which is great news for both newcomers and experienced Facebook advertisers. It means that if you've ever advertised on the Facebook platform, it's easy to get started on Instagram and launching your first Instagram campaign will be very straightforward. Given how Instagram works as a primarily visual platform, ads on Instagram are typically priced using the CPM model. Not so long ago, Instagram ads cost significantly less than Facebook ads. Today, however, the gap between the cost of advertising on Facebook versus Instagram is narrowing. When Instagram first began allowing advertisers to launch campaigns across the platform, average CPMs were roughly between $5 and $6.50. Now they're inching closer to the $10 CPM mark, around the same price as Facebook. While the cost of advertising on Instagram has undoubtedly risen, if we're going to look at Instagram advertising costs objectively, 
We have to take into account the incredibly granular targeting options and the tendency for Instagram ads to have a much higher engagement rate than on other platforms. Overall, Instagram continues to be a great advertising platform for advertisers, boasting the highest engagement statistics of any social media platforms by far. The data shows just how strong the potential return on an Instagram campaign could be, especially for engagement-driven campaign objectives. This, however, does raise the stakes in terms of overhead, though not necessarily in terms of CPM or other metrics. As we established earlier, the lower introductory CPMs advertisers could expect to pay are close to consistent with Facebook's rates. But one problem for newcomers to paid social on both Facebook and Instagram is the necessity of creating high quality ads to run. This means either you'll have to create your ads yourself or hire someone to create them for you. As with other platforms, there are a set of practices advertisers can employ to lower their ad costs on the platform. The good news? Controlling and managing your Instagram ads budget is exactly the same as it is in Facebook ads. It's even controlled by the same campaign settings in the same section of the campaign editor dashboard. Here are a few specific ways to lower your Instagram ads costs. Make your Instagram ads look as native and natural as possible, thus boosting anticipated engagement. Look into which demographics are generating the most expensive results, then omit those audiences from your targeting. Create dedicated landing pages for each Instagram ad so the experience is as seamless as possible for your audience. Retarget to people who have already visited your site for higher relevancy. How does Instagram ROI look for advertisers? While the cost of Instagram ads are likely to increase until they reach equilibrium with Facebook ads, Engagement with sponsored or branded content on Instagram is by far the strongest of any online advertising platform. With this in mind, rising costs, particularly CPA, may not necessarily mean reduced returns. As such, Instagram ads offer very strong potential ROI, particularly for engagement-driven campaigns and for businesses whose target customers are heavy Instagram users. Now that was a lot to get through but hopefully you're feeling more prepared and excited to advertise online and bring returns your business needs in 2020. As always, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more content like this. And don't forget to let us know what other topics you'd like us to cover. Until next time.